Hi everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. If it's your first time visiting the channel, please hit that little image there in the bottom corner and you can subscribe to the channel if you hit a notification bell, then you'll get notified of all the videos when I put them out. Um, and if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. So, here we go. This is a new project. This is a, a first group build I've done for many, many years. In fact, I've only ever done one before and that was on a... 132nd scale Phantom that some of you may remember I did on Flory models and over on large scale planes and um, yeah it was quite a project. So this is the uh, group build that's happening over at Black Rifle Model Works and it's basically a uh, sort of royal themed uh, group build. I can't exactly remember what it's called now, I'm sorry, which is very badly prepared of me. But it's, uh, it's, it's obviously it started on the 1st of July and it finishes on the 31st of December 2023. Um, so today is the 3rd of July, it's Monday, and uh, I've been working on another little project that you will have by now seen uh, me doing, that's just like a three-parter, so um, I've decided to crack into this one now. Um, so this is obviously the Meng Chieftain Mark 10 in 135th scale, and on the front of the box is the Berlin Camo Scheme, which is the one I'm going to be doing. I'm getting lots of help from you guys, thank you very much. Mark is sending me some paint, Phil is sending me some books. Um, Mark also offered to send me some uh, interior parts, but obviously this is going to be going on the back of the scammel, so it's going to be all closed up and it'll be turrets swiveled round with the, the lock on and everything. Um, so, without further ado, let's have a look what's inside the box. We've done a review of the kit already, and as you can see, I'm just showing here that it's completely unstarted, haven't touched it. The first step of the instruction is the wheels, haven't touched them, So, um, and it's in this lovely, very, very light grey plastic. Somebody's been telling me twice now that these tracks apparently are awful. Um, I did happen to, it, it flashed up on my screen last night, I think it was, or this morning. Um, somebody's done a build of this kit. Um, one of the less lesser heard of uh, builders, fairly new to, uh, to YouTube, I think, and it's titled The Best Tracks I've Ever Made. So I need it to put them on his and they look great. So I don't know if, if the person that's contacted me had a dodgy set or what, or maybe I've got a dodgy set here, or maybe the guy that made the kit did it all wrong and they came out nice. I don't know, <laughs> but we'll see when I build them. So I'm going to get this box off to one side because there's a lot of stuff in here. And we're going to look at the instructions. Now with, with this model, I am going to try and stay with the, you know, I'm always darting around. I'm going to try and stay with the instruction sequence. So we're going to do the wheels, we're going to build up the suspension and everything, and then we're going to have the suspension, and then we're going to do the hull. This is where I'm going to break away, because what they do, they have you fit all the idler and the gearbox ends and everything, and then you've gone on to the upper turret, okay, and you're still working on the upper turret, and then when you've got it all together, you start adding loads of details, more and more details, and yes, you can see, and then, when it's all done, you put the suspension on. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to do all this big chunky work while there's no little detail. You can imagine having this tank turned over to do the suspension and you've got that little mirror sticking out. So I don't really agree with this build sequence. So what I'm going to do is go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to jump straight ahead to 28. I'm going to do 28, 29, 30. And then we'll go back to number 11. OK, so in fact, what I'll probably do is put the hull on and then do all the greeblies. And that way you can work on any seams or anything without having the little detail parts. So we will dart about a little bit, but I'm going to try as much as I can to stay with the instructions because I know that some of the newer guys out there get quite confused when I start darting around. And uh, this may, might make life a bit easier for them if I try as well as I can to stay on on course. So um, first things to do is the wheels. And as you can see, we've got separate tyres uh, here, which are, these are the... Um, these are the return these are the return rollers these are the idlers and these are the road wheels now you can see on here we've got tires on the um on the return roller on the idlers which is very unusual um and as you can see we've got separate tires but you might be thinking yeah i can paint the tires black and then put them on but you can't because you can see part of the wheel rim is in the tire which makes for a very accurate construction because usually tank wheels have a rolled over rim and obviously you can't mold that because it can't come out of the mold so instead of just having this like a a flat dish this is a, a, a magnifier 
instead of just having a flat disc, which is what a lot of them do, they should actually have like a rolled over rim, which you obviously wouldn't be able to pull the mould tool out of. So they make the separate disc, which makes it easy. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling and get some parts off the sprue and start putting some bits together. All right, so there's all the parts off the sprue ready for step one. <clears throat> just a couple of things to note. The poly caps, uh, they come on this little black sprue. There's loads of spares, so don't worry if you mess any up. But as you can see, like on this one here, but if you can see that on there, there's like a, a ring of flash around the edge. You need to cut that off. And what I do is put it against my finger. And bear in mind, a lot of this I'm doing, a lot of these, this talking I'm doing for the newer modelers out there. And I just do that and just push the flash up against your finger. You run the risk of cutting yourself, so be careful. You can remove the flash like that. It's very, very difficult to cut off otherwise. So that's, I find that's the best way to get rid of flash on vinyl parts is push it into something. You could actually push it down on the bench rather than your finger, but um, anyway. Um, and also on the backs of these parts here, these hubs fit in, so that's going to go in there and that retains the the, um, the poly cap in there. But you need to be very careful because I know it's, it's difficult to see them on this plastic, but yeah, bane of my life, ejector pin marks, there was two one there, one there on this face that stopped it going together properly. But luckily that face is flat, so you can basically sand the whole back of the uh, part. There's ejector pin marks on here as well. And you can get rid of all of them at the same time. So that was the, the couple of things of note. Um, the other thing that's really nice is the sprockets have the sprue connectors on the ends of the teeth rather than in the middle of the teeth, which manufacturers often do. And it's a nightmare to get in there and clean them out really neat, neat and tidy. So very, very nice so far. I'm loving this. This is lovely. The parts are crisp. The detail is gorgeous. I mean, they're, they're, everything's lovely um, and the plastic's a joy to work with. So that's all the parts off the sprue for step one. Now, as you all know, I always prime everything black. I always do. That way you get like a pre-shading effect. If, you, if, if I didn't prime anything and then I sprayed these wheels green, there is a risk of being able to see this very, very light grey plastic through it and it's going to stick up like a sore thumb. So I tend to paint everything black and that way if you do get anything showing through, it's black, it's like a shadow. Um, there is a problem here. Now these wheels are extremely accurate. So rather than just moulding, like I said just now, instead of having just a cylinder like that, you know, just a straight, so you've got the wheel face there and then the tyres out here. They've accurately done these wheels so they have this rolled over lip that like I was talking about. You can see there, it's sort of recesses in and back out which is how they are in real life so this is beautifully made to, to give you that one problem with that if I glue all this together now getting the paint into there to hide the grey plastic is going to be extremely difficult so what I'm going to do is give those a quick blast of paint first and also in here and in here because when we put this together as you can see it's going to be very difficult to get the black paint to go all the way in there and everything. And um, then we're going to come along and paint them green. And then we're going to come along because this is going to be burning camo and paint them black. Um, I am assuming, please tell me if you know, please don't mention that a friend told you or you saw it in a magazine or something. If you actually know, I'm assuming these were delivered to their regiments green. And that somebody did actually say in the in one of the comments before actually they said they were delivered green and then the guys actually painted them on site uh, in the field or at the at the warehouse or whatever in Berlin or wherever they were in Germany. Um, so if if you actually know were they delivered in green for the green and black camo and then the we and then everything was done. I, I, somebody told me the wheels were painted um, were left green. Somebody told me the wheels were painted black. And if you look at the model, they're grey. So um, there's three different stories so far. Now I'm going down the black because Phyllis told me they were black and I believe what Phil tells me. Um, because he seems to know what he's on about. Uh, but he's not sure if they were delivered in green and black or if they were actually, um, you know, sort of the, all the wheels were already painted black or whatever before they went. But uh, we shall see. So in that case, if they were delivered in green and black, I'm assuming all the back, even if the front of the wheels are black, all the backs, all the hull, all the, everything will be green because it would have been painted green as a new tank. So I'm not, I'm, they wouldn't have taken the wheels off in Berlin, surely, and painted the backs of the wheels black and everything. So it would have just been the front faces of the wheels were black and all the rest of the hulls, the, the, the grey, the white and the, the ivory and the brown. 
but everything else I'm sure, underneath the tank and everything I'm sure would have been green. If you know, please uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be very interested to know. But at the moment, I'm just going to prime everything black. So what I'm going to do is go away now and get the backs of these, like, like with these idlers here, or the return rollers, should I say. I mean, I think it would be a good idea to paint in there black before we put them together. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm also going to have a cough. And uh, I'll see you back in a second. By the way, one other thing, something I am going to do throughout this build, because I know there are a lot of newbies watching, I'll just go quickly over the tools I've used. Ordinary cutters, number 10A Swan Morton scalpel blade, uh, Infini sanding sponge 800, and Infini Matador sanding stick 400. I use the sanding stick for doing like the flat backs and everything, like this. And then what I do, like with parts like this, they've got a sharp edge, they have a little bit of flash, just go around and just wipe over them with the sponge. And also like with your sprockets, if you just gently wipe over, don't push it in because it'll dig in and ruin your sponge. If you just gently wipe over your sprocket, it just takes all the sharp edges off the teeth and makes them look a lot nicer when you put some metal on them or more metalizer on them, whatever. So that's that's what I've used so far. OK, and as I use more, I'll cover it if I forget. Tell me in the comments below and then I can go back over it. I know a lot of people hate hearing about tools, but I know a lot of people, new people, love to hear about tools. These Infini Sanders Sticks are amazing. You can get them for premium hobbies. And if you use the code NMB10, you get 10% off. They are um, brilliant. And you can also get the pack, which is a full set <clears throat> of all the sponges, the Matadors and the Zebra Sticks and the PE Sanders all in one in a nice premium hobbies holder. He made this especially for me in this blue because it's by Mustang Colour. Um, but if you get one, it'll be in silver. OK, so there we are. Right, let's get some painting done. Oh, well, just in case you're wondering, the way I do this, I have a piece of wood, an old piece of wood with blue tack on it, and then I can stick the parts down. Obviously, they'll be like, laid out in strips. I can stick the parts down and paint them that way. And that's how I hold my parts for painting. There you go, as you can see, got the wheels painted with the um, <clears throat> idlers. I've actually painted both sides of them because obviously that inner is going to be difficult to get to and the outer is going to be difficult to get to when it's got that rim in front of it. So we've done that and that's just basically a very thin coat of Mr. Surfacer 1500, or Mr. Finisher Surfer 1500 black, uh, thin roughly 50-50. It's often quite hard to get hold of this stuff. So if you do have, a, if, if Premium Hobbies or anyone else has it in stock, Best to get two or three jars if you use it, like I do, because I use it for everything. And um, it is just the best primer, in my opinion. There is nothing I've found that comes out smoother, finer, other than this one here, MRP Fine Surface Primer Black. This is absolutely wonderful stuff, but it's very, very thin, and you use quite a lot of it. But um, if you just want a nice black primer, then that Mr. Surfacer is great. If I run out of Mr. Surfacer, I'll use the MRP. Um, but the MRP White is absolutely awesome. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. I'm doing a lot of that, aren't I? So, um, let's get on with uh, what we're going to do next. And I think what I might do is actually paint these now green. Because I believe, because Phil said, I believe these wheels were painted in the field black on the Berlin camo. So, assuming that Phil was correct, and I'm hoping that none of you correct me down in the comments down below because I've asked the question. I'm assuming they were green and then they were painted black in the field. If that's the case, they would have been sprayed black in the field. I doubt if they were done really super carefully. So in the backs of these rims and everything, there probably would have been witnesses of green paint and sort of in the wheel centers and everything. You probably would see green paint if you looked at them. So um, hopefully I can find some good images and, uh, and uh, have a look. But um I think I might go on and paint them green, but I think before I do that, I'm going to go on and start doing some work on, on the step two, get the parts off, see how they all go together, and also get some priming done on them, because it's going to be the same issue with them, you've got down inside the wheel, just like these are. So uh, I'll get those parts off the sprue, and then I'll come back and show you how they look. Just popping in here with a little tip for the newer modellers out there. As you can see, we have a bench absolutely covered in wheels, and I'll show you an assembly in a minute. These are the nicest plastic tank wheels I've ever seen. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, this kit must be better than the Tacom Chieftain Mark 10 because I can't see how the Tacom one could be better, even at this stage. Um, so basically what we've got is the outer tyre, then we've got this spacer, and then we've got the actual wheel itself. Um, and they're going together. And this actually, this part here goes in with the, you've got like a, you can see there's like a recess 
on the inner face and there's a recess on that inner face. So that's going in that way around. And then the wheel's going in with the bolts facing outwards. And that's such a nice fit, it just sits in there. Um, if you want to, we'll put some Mr. Service or whatever in there to fill up the gap to stop the uh, the tire. But you can see there, look at that. You've got the correct ribs, wheels, which is normally resin territory. They are gorgeous, aren't they? Really, really nice. The bulk detail is beautiful. They're going to look amazing with a bit of dust and washing them. So, yeah, really, really nice. Well, I mean, um, this kit was from Creative Hobbies was like 38 quid. What a bargain. Um, absolute bargain. So basically what we've got is all of these parts here, so all of this, so the outer rings and the spacers, have the sprue tabs attached to the actual face, not to the OD, which is brilliant because that means you're not trying to sand things round. So I've got here, this This is a zebra stick from Infini, available again from Premium Hobbies, um, and it's this is a 400 grit, brand new one, and it's perfect for doing this. And you'll see that what I've done, I've put black magic marker on here, now, I wouldn't normally do that because black magic marker any remaining will come through the paint, but these wheels are going to end up black anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But um, basically, I've got black magic marker either side of the sprue tab, so what I can do is just put this on here and just slide it around until, I mean, I could hold it like this and just go like this over one side. I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm just letting the stick do the work so that it just removes the sprue nib so we get a nice flat face. And when the pen's gone, when the pen disappears, I know that the sprue nib's gone, so then that can go in the dumb pile there. And the same with the tyres here. We've got the sprue nibs. Some have got three, some have got two. Uh, no, sorry, they will. Some have got three, some have got four. Is that right? So I can't remember how they were connected now. Um, yeah, some have got four. Some have got three. Some have got four. So basically, um, again, we've got dots all the way around, and we're just going to sand the tire back face until all those dots disappear just like that okay so there we go now the outer, outer edges we've got bits and burrs on there we're not really going to worry about because we're going to sand them once they're all together which is going to be part of the subject of one of my beginners videos um, but what we can do for now is just take an 800 grit stick and just run around the outside just to remove any flashing or anything in case it gets rolled over onto the inside. So that's basically how you do that. Now the wheels, again we've got spruners but they're on the outer diameter so I'm going to take my 400 stick and there's two ways you can do this. You can go like this and move the stick in a circle. Okay. What you don't want to do is take a big chunk of the outer wheel away although on this model it doesn't really matter much because that ring is going to be in front of it. So if you do accidentally, like I'll do here, Okay, so there you are, the sprue nib's gone. If I accidentally take a bit too much off and put a bit of a flat spot on the wheel, I'm sure you can see there, it doesn't really matter because that ring is going to hide it. Okay, so you don't need to take too much care. But basically, when you're removing sprue nibs from round parts, that's what I do. Bit of a bit of, um, pen on there. The other thing you can do is do this. Okay, so you can go around, move the wheel in a curve, move the stick in a curve, just like so. The correct way, the way I was taught as an engineer at Rolls-Royce, to file something round is actually like this. Okay, a lot of people you see doing this, that is actually the correct way to file something round, okay? is like that. But it's not easy when you're not used to doing it. When it's on a, in a vice, on a bench, it's easy. I would suggest the best way for newbies is to come along and do that. Okay, because then you're not going to lose control. But this is a great kit to practice on because, as I say, it doesn't matter if you mess it up. So that's how I'm going about sanding these wheels. Right, so there we are. So the next time I see you, I'll have all this painted black because I don't want any bits of grey plastic showing through. You can imagine with that ring in there and that, you know, with those, those spacers in there, it's going to be a nightmare to get the paint in. So we'll just paint it all black and then put it together and worry about it afterwards. OK, so here we are, quite a few hours later, lots of work. There's about 134 parts here, I think I counted, including the polycaps. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's only the wheels. 
<laughs> it's crazy. So um, we can look at starting some assembly now because I've got all the black primer down. I've got the green paint on. You notice I haven't painted the sprockets. We'll do those when they're uh, when they're together. Um, but the wheels, I've done the, the rims in the green. We've got all the insides done in the green. And this is what I'm talking about. When we look at these main road wheels, when they go together, they, for some reason my glasses have steamed up. I don't know why. When they go together, they go together like this. And as you can see, you've got the, the features inside the road wheels. And my intention is when I spray them black, I would just hold the airbrush like this. And then you'll get green down in the bottom. I know it's a bit overkill, but it's, it's what I like to do. It's the sort of thing I enjoy doing. Um, I must do one day. I must do a... Oh, what was the name of the country? I can't remember now. But if you remember, back in the... After the... Um, the Israel-Egypt war, um, they, they Israel captured Egyptian tanks. So there were T-55s that were once Russian, that were bought by, that were Egyptian, and then the Israelis captured them and rebuilt them and everything. And then they got moved on to the, um, oh, I can't remember the, the name of the country now, but they were, they painted everything in like light blue. Can you imagine all the different colour combinations you can have on that? You know, it was once green and then it was sort of that Egyptian, the Egyptian colours, and then it was the Israeli, um, the Israeli colour, which slips my mind now, I've got it up here. Um, and then, you know, and then it would have been the, the, the light blue and you could chip the hell out of that and really make it look good. I've got some books on the, uh, is it Tehran's or Tehran's? I've got some books on them and they are absolutely awesome. Anyway, enough about that. So, uh, we can look again all together. So, um, we have our idlers here. So we are going to put a, it looks like here we can actually put the wheels together put the poly cap in after which is great because that means we won't be soaking the poly cap in cement yeah that that's great so you can actually put the poly cap in after so we'll put these together so what I'm going to do is remove with my round blade just remove some paint from there just to get a slightly better joint do the same on that one as you can see, we've got all this green paint in here. So now when we spray them black, we will see a nice green inside. And then we'll cover it with dust and you probably won't see anything at all. But it's just, it's just the way I roll. It's just how I like to do things. Especially when you know... It's like if I did a tornado from the Gulf War, I would have to do it in the normal British camouflage and then do the pink and then chip away at it. There we go. So that's gone together lovely. Right, so we're going to have to pre-glue this because we can't get any cement down in there. So I'll get my Tamiya Extra Thin and what we'll do is we'll run, we'll run some Tamiya Extra Thin around there. The capillary action will pull that around and then we can... What am I doing? I can stick that on there. Turn it till it lines up, and that should be enough in there to hold it together. I'm going to do the same on this one. And there we go, and then we can leave that to dry. And then we can look at putting the poly cap in and putting the back cap on afterwards. There's the rear caps there, they're going to go on. So the sprockets are here. I can't pick that because I don't have any bloody nails. Come here. So that's going to go in there. The polycap's going to go in there. So what I'm going to do here is grab a sanding stick and just remove some paint from the end of there. Of course, you don't need to, to paint all this stuff first. I only do it because I like to guarantee that I don't get any. It's like what you'll notice when I did the scammel. It's going to go in there and do the poly cap. Duh. Um, that, that tan plastic from Hobby Boss, you really don't want any of that to be showing through your green paint after you've finished your model. So that's why I do that. That's why I like to um, paint 
paint it all first, get it all primed in black. So that's gone in there. So now we can get some extra thin into there, get that flooded in. Yes, that was my stomach rumbling. I've had no tea yet. There we go, that's gone together. So that's cool, that's one of the sprockets built. And then get some cement into there. Turn it until it lines up. And there's that other sprocket built. Now, we want to make sure that these are aligned so that we don't get the a problem with the tracks. And what I do for that, I get a metal rod. Uh, let me go find a metal rod. It's going to be up in here. I should have been prepared for this, sorry. And I don't think if, I don't know if this is going to be, no it's not. I need something bigger, something like this. And what we can do is push those sprockets into that rod, just like so, and make sure, I think it's coming apart, make sure that all the, the, the teeth on the sprocket are all touching. You can do it like this and make sure it's square, but basically what I'm showing you, you can see how that's touching there, if it's like that, Okay, when you've got them all together, all back to back and squared up, it needs to be touching all four. And that way you know that your tracks will all fit nicely. So there we go, just push it in, make sure it's touching all four. Now I can see here that I've got it in there, and I can see, if I can show you, So I've got them all together and that tooth there, this one here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, is not touching. So I know I need to give that a little twist around. I'm having fun here with this. So, Basically that's the way to do it, I mean, the proper way to do it is to have something set up um, with, a, with a rod all set up, you know, on a pair of parallel bars or something and just push it in. But that's the simple way to do it. So uh, the other way to do it is just do it on one sprocket and make sure that it's square. When you look at it like that, it should be square to the sprocket. It shouldn't be off on an angle like that, it should, it should be square. And I can see that one's not quite square, so we'll give that a little tweak. There we go. So that's that. If the glue dries, just put another little drop of extra thin in there. It'll melt the joint and you'll be able to get it going again. And that one's not wanting to stay together. So I'm going to put some extra thin in there. And I'm going to put some more in this one as well, just in case. There we go. So that's them done. Right. Let's look at these road wheels. Okay, moving on to the idlers, not the road wheels. So we've got six of these. I'll only do one on camera. We don't, you don't need to see me do all six, do you? You'll be... Uh, You'll be fast asleep, so which you might be fast asleep anyway because, uh, yeah. So that's going to go together like that. So that's all good. So we can put a drop of extra thin on here. I would normally put parts together first and then apply the extra thin, but because these are all painted, I don't want to destroy the paint by going in with the brush. So just put those together, make sure they're nice and square and parallel. To do that you can just roll them along the bench and if they go like that as they're rolling then you know they're not parallel. I can do that. And they look pretty good. Not that they really matter that much I don't think because they're going to be behind the uh, the side shields aren't they. Um, so going back to these we can put these poly caps in. Just like so. And remove some paint from there and then this part here is going to go on so we've got ejector pin marks in there but they're subsurface so that's okay and I've painted the back of this green just to make sure that the back of it is is green not that it matters because I don't 
you know, seeing it, but my, my, my problem is if this was like a dark grey plastic or indeed a green plastic, I wouldn't worry about it. But um, my concern is this very, very light grey, nearly white plastic. If we get any of that anywhere, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb if you've got it on, on show anywhere. Should I say so we can get that down on there. Get that to pick up in its key. There we go. That's gone on. So that's the back plate on the idler. So that's that one done. Um, and now going on to the road wheels. So we have, you can see these parts here all going together. Um, I believe if we leave this off, I believe we can do the same as we've done and put the poly caps in after. Yes, we can. So I think that's what we'll do. That way we don't have to worry about glue on the poly caps. Now we've got ejector pin marks in here. We've got ejector pin marks on this surface here. And we've got ejector pin marks in there. So when these go together, is it all going to foul up and Yes, it does. So we need to remove those ejector pin marks. So once again, the 400 zebra stick can come out. And just so that you can see them, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do the same as I did before. I'll put some dots on here. In fact, I'll put a line over the ejector pin marks because it's probably very difficult to see them on this practically white plastic. Just give it a quick rub and you can see one, two, three, four, you can see the four raised ejection pin marks. So we'll just get rid of them to make sure we've got a nice flat face. And that way our wheels will stay nice and true. We've also got some on here, but they are all, by the look of it, they are all subsurface. So that's cool. Now I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if, okay, that's good. There's a couple of ejector pin marks in here, which are slightly raised. I don't think they're affecting the fit. We could just run a blade over there. They're absolutely tiny. I mean, they're... if Hobby Boss could get ejector pin marks this small, I'd be really happy. So that's going to go together like that. So what we can do, we can use some of that. Oh. The white cement, but it's solidly glued on. I'm going to put a drop inside as well because I'm not exactly sure where this is all contacting. So that can go into there. And now that's gone together lovely and parallel because we've taken the time to remove the ejector pin marks and everything. And then we can fit, we can remove some paint from here. I've painted the back of these green. It's a very thin coat of paint, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so that's a nice fit in there. That's a really snug fit. So I'm going to put some extra thin on this front face here. And then very quickly get that on. Okay, so that cap's gone on. So now we can put the um, yeah, we can put the have I done this right? I shouldn't be sticking these wheels together yet, should I? So I'm going to do it this way. This, this is not the way they tell you to do it, but I'm going to do it this way because now I can paint this before I do all this. So that's going to go into there like so. And then that's going to go onto there like so. And then that's going to go into there like so. And that's going to go onto there like so. So this is another way of doing it should you want to. But if you want to be able to clean up the back of here where the tire is, then I would do it the way they suggest. So I'm going to leave this one as it is. 
but I think I'll do the others as they suggest and build up the wheel. So that is basically going to go into there. That is going to go. They're a very nice fit, so you need to make sure they go in nice and square. That's going to go into there. That's the back of the wheel. And again, we've got the ejector pin marks on there. So what we can do here is come along with some extra thin and just run it into that joint, let it capillary around. There we go. And then we can get an outer face. One of these, that can go into there. That can go into there. Push that in. Let the cement capillary around, just like so. And that's that. It's as simple as that. So there we are, there's our house. Now this one I'm not going to rip it apart because the glue will mess up the faces, but I think it's a lot easier. If you want to do any work on cleaning up that tire there, well that, that one there won't be seen, but this one here, if you might want to do any work on it, then it'll be easier to do it like that than it's like that. So there we go. So that's basically that. And then what we'll do here, we'll put the poly cap in the back and then put this back plate on, which is just going to fit in there like so and that's our wheel assembly completed so I've shown you two ways <laughs> by mistake I didn't intend to do that but um, I shouldn't have glued it I was looking at the ejector pin marks and I should I should have stopped but never mind it's only one wheel so um so that's that guys so I've got a load more work to do now and then I'll come back when we've got all the wheels done and in the meantime I think I'll get them all painted and everything as well I'll get these in here painted green and get the tires done and everything and uh, we'll go from from there so I'll probably put some weight on these just to make sure they all stay nice and square but um, I would recommend getting rid of the detective marks because there is a gap in there and it will go it goes together a lot nicer without them there so I'll see you tomorrow for you to me in a couple of seconds for you okay, so we um, it is still tonight I've, I've just um, fitted these outer rims to these idlers and they sort of just sit, as you can see here, there's like a taper in the back of them and they just sit on that taper. And I found the best way to, to sort of square them up and get them to go on nice. If you just get them, get, get them on there, run some extra thin around them and then just get some tweezers and just squeeze the tire and the rim together. And because the extra thins in there, it all kind of, sort of gels together and you end up with it nice and parallel. I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect anyway, because it's not like a a running tank but what I did find was on a couple of them they were slightly you can see there there's a slight step slight bit of the wheel sticking out so if you squeeze that on that side the other side pops up so get it sort of even all the way around but um they really are nice and now you can see why I painted the inside there because you got that right relief down there you never get in there with the airbrush and get that all painted so um not without probably making a mess anyway I know a lot of people say oh you don't need to do that well maybe you don't but I, I, I like to just be sure that I'm not going to have this light grey plastic showing through so that's why I've done it so we're pretty much all done now we got all the return rollers together we got the sprockets together I've still got these two tires and here because I glued that road wheel together which was incorrect so they're not um they're not fitted yet because I'm going to get in there and get all that painted in there and if I put the tires on it's going to make it a lot more difficult so um I guess the next step is to prime and paint the back of these wheels and uh, see how they look um, I've gone around and taken all the ejector pin marks out of all of them be careful because some of them the ejector pin marks are a lot bigger than the others obviously it depends on the position in the mold tool and you've got um you've got 12 of these wheels so there's six on each sprue so you're going to have you know pairs are the same and you know, some of them are very very shallow but a couple of them were quite high so you want to get them off otherwise they are going to interfere and without them there they will go together beautifully It'll be all nice and parallel and everything so uh, it's worth taking the time just to the extra bit of effort just to get it right so um so there we go so I really am going to go now and uh, I will see you tomorrow 
Okay, so here we are back next day now. Got lots of painting done, done all the backs of the wheels and the black and the green and everything. And uh, I must be crazy, I don't know why I bother. I uh, managed to get some painting on that one, the one I glued together. So that's all done. Something I have noticed, and I'm going to be making another video on this with the beginner's section. So if you've already watched this video, before that begin, no, the beginner section will come out first. Um, so basically, if you look here, if you watch as that wheel turns, you can see it's kind of going like this. And the reason for that is when we put these wheels together, they are, I don't know if you can see that, but they actually move. If you look at the left hand side, you'll see it moving in relation to the right hand side. If I put a line across there, it should make it easier for you to see. There you go, you can see it now. You can see the left hand wheel is moving in relation to the right hand wheel. And what happens there, if you get it glued out, what, what's happening is you're putting two discs together and they're sort of like this. So as the wheel rolls, it kind of goes like that. And the result will be on your model. When you look at it, you'll have like the outer wheel will be touching the tracks and the inner wheel won't. So, or vice versa, and you don't want that. So what we want to do is try and true them up. now. This is why I said I'm going to do a beginner's video on this because somebody asked this question about this very subject about truing up tank wheels and stuff. So I'm going to sh in that video I am going to show one how to put them together um, without having that run out, and two how to correct it if you do get the run out. So I'll do I'll do one now and then I'll go away, make that video, and then I'll come back. But that video will be coming out before this one, if you know what I mean. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove some of that paint from there because I've gone too far. The other thing I noticed, and I can't remember now if I mentioned this before, I'm sorry. So if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. Yes, I do remember. I do remember talking about it. The ejector pin marks on the backs of these. Make sure you get rid of them all. Um, and we've also got paint on there. So we'll take our 400 grit stick and just remove that from there so we can now put this together if you notice I haven't put this rear cap on this rear cap is going to go on there okay if you fit that you must put the poly cap in before you put the wheels together as they say in the instructions but I haven't put that cap on so that I can glue this together like this and not get the poly cap all soaked in glue so again I'm going to use the white top Okay, so we've got the white top glue here. In fact, I'll talk about this first. This is a V-block. It's a small V-block. It's an old one and it's been in my garage. You can see it's quite rusty. I've given it a bit of a clean up, but it's fine for this. Going back when I was doing the scammel um, and showing you how to true the wheels up, I basically used a square and somebody suggested, why don't you use a V-block? Yes, using the V-block is the obvious choice. And my reply was, but how many people have got a V-block? Well, I thought about it afterwards and that was a pretty stupid answer. If the way to do the job is with a V-block, go and get a V-block. They're hardly expensive. I'm sure they've got them on Amazon for a few quid. So basically what we're going to do is glue this together and then we're going to push it into the V while we're turning it and it will actually level the wheels up so that they'll be all together. Oops. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get some glue onto here. Just like so, that's probably too much. And then get this together. Like that. Give it a bit of a... Just to make sure it's all gone well together. And then just pushing the top wheel in like this. Now you'll notice I'm doing it this way up. Because we haven't got that disc in the back. If you've got that disc in the back... The wheel will rock so if you've done it the other way around do it that way up okay you don't want the wheel to be rocking in fact i would thoroughly recommend leaving those plates off and do it this way around so there we are and we should find with that wheel when we roll that along the ground it stays dead upright of course it all depends on how good those tires are but there we are so we can see that the wheel's been rubbing all the way around. So happy with that. So there's one done. We'll just do another one. Again, we'll remove some of the paint from there. 
I'm not going to worry about removing it from there because it's only a very thin layer of the green. Get those together. There we go. Give them a little do 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 to help the bond. And again, push it into there. Push the top wheel. And that should get us all good. Okay, so uh, I'll get the rest done and I'll see you back in a minute. And we're back. So we've got everything all painted now, all good. So we have the idlers, all painted with the green face on the front, green face on the back. These tires appear to have a very thin wall on them, so I don't know how we're gonna mask those. I think it's just gonna be a case of careful spraying. But obviously I'll be going in with a tire black on here and then um, painting the black. My intention is to have some of the green showing through just to give a bit of interest. But since I was doing this last night and talking to you about having the green showing through where they would have missed it and stuff, the books have come from Phil. Thank you, Phil. And you can see in there that they brush painted them and they probably got in all the nooks and crannies. So probably it won't be accurate having them, but I have noticed some 432s that have got green wheels. So we might even have a green wheel on here. We'll see. Um, so yeah, sprockets are all done. They're ready to get the, the teeth all chipped up. And then we've got the wheels themselves. And as you can see, I think it's paid off. You know, even if I didn't do the green, just with the black, pa painting inside those bits first, because you've got absolutely no way. There is no light grey showing in there whatsoever. Same in the back. It's all great. Um, it's all good. So the backs of the wheels are going to be left green anyway. They wouldn't have painted the backs of the wheels. And all the hull and everything will be green, I'm sure. So some of this you may think was a bit of a waste of time. Um, if that's the case, then that's, that's your opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, I, at the moment, after reading a book, I would tend to agree with you. But if I'm going to do use a bit of artistic license, I may have a green wheel on there. I may have some green chipping. I may have some bits of green left where it hasn't been fully painted. Whatever, we'll see. Uh, maybe just a green hubcap or something. We'll, we'll see. I'll do, do something just to add a bit of interest, probably. So that's it. That's the wheels done. So that's part one. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. It's been... I know it's like just the wheels, but like I said, there's 134 parts there. It's absolutely amazing. That's, that's more parts than the whole Qatari Spitfire, 132nd scale. So just in those wheels. So yeah, brilliant. Uh, very nicely done. Very nicely moulded. So now we're going to be moving on to suspension. So we're looking at making our work in suspension. Again, I'll be doing the same here, painting bits and pieces so we get in all the nooks and crannies. So um, I'll see you for part two and we'll do the suspension. So part two will be steps three, two, eight. Yep, so steps three to eight will be part two. So however long that takes, that'll be part two. See you for then. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the little face down here. Subscribe. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't liked to give it a thumbs down. And um, if you want to see some pictures, go over to the Black Model Rights, Black, Black Model Works Facebook community and have a look in there and there'll be pictures of the work done. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.